Good morning, everyone. It's Tuesday, June 11th. So yesterday was a tough, tough night at my part-time income job. It was a kind of medium flow of customers <clears throat> and um, it made the night drag on and I couldn't help myself but stare at my watch once in a while. Every time customers came to my area it seemed like time just flew. And my part-time income is very basic, very simple. I do cashiering, that's it. So I'm not dealing with customer service per se. I'm just at the checkout, I take their items, I run it through the scanner, and they pay for it, and they're gone. Um, Sometimes I get customers that make stupid remarks like, oh, I see you're waiting for me. Or something like, I looked at you, you looked kind of bored, so I thought I'd come by and say hi. It's humor with an injection of sarcasm. But you know, I ignore it and I smile, I say hello. And then they're gone. I'll probably never see them again. So before I continue with this interesting subject, I want to say thank you to all of my subscribers and to those people just visiting my channel for the first time. If you guys see something interesting that's in my channel, uh, please consider on subscribing. I'll be right back with more. I'm not suggesting anything so complicated. So, my results of my first interview has not been in yet. And this Thursday, I have my second in, uh, interview set up. And I already told my part-time income that I'm not going to be in on Thursday because I have an interview. I was very honest with them. And I did tell them that I'm looking to replace my full-time job. I don't want to work the full-time job that I have. But at the same time, I have reservations. Um, I'm a little bit nervous about it. I've been doing it for almost five years, four and a half years. But it's not the job for me and to be quite honest, I don't feel 100% welcomed on this job. There's a lot of sour grapes here where I work. And in the beginning, I did say that I will treat everyone the same regardless. And I have been. But even when you treat everybody the same regardless, doesn't mean they're going to. People are set in their ways. As I was saying, I let off on a very important note. You can't change people. No matter what, you're not going to change people. You're not supposed to change them anyway. And they're not supposed to change you. You either, or they either, accept or don't accept. So, this conversation opened up a small can of worms because last night while I was in bed laying there trying to sleep, um, thoughts of my son came to mind and my God, he just turned 29 and we haven't had much of a relationship. After, after he turned um, 18, we didn't have much of a relationship at all. 
we had a relationship, but after 18, he really uh, started making decisions himself. Um, he was working, he was going to school. But uh, after he dropped out of his uh, two year college, he told me, I don't need you to pay for my school anymore because it's a waste of money and I don't want to do what I'm doing. I don't like it. It's not for me. Well, I'm glad he found out early. It's not for him. He's the one that chose that, <clears throat> that career as a mechanic. And I respected him. I said, well, what are you going to do? Well, he's working for the city, but he really wants to be a cop and he took the exam. He passed it. But he's not, he's not happy that they didn't choose him. So he appealed. And uh, last I know, nothing happened with that. So today, I don't know what he's doing. I don't know where he's living. I have an idea. But, you know, I have thoughts of my son because I do have a guilty side. But our minds were kind of funny. As time goes, our thoughts and minds can turn against us without even knowing. We start blaming ourselves. It wasn't my son's fault that I went to a divorce when he was just 10 years old. Children take it very hard and they blame themselves. They think it's something that they did, but it's not, it's not. It was very hard on him, very hard on him. Um, would I have done things differently? Absolutely, I would have done things differently. I would have stayed until he was 18 or maybe work on my marriage and stay in it. I'm not perfect, but He's a man now. He's 29 years old. I don't know if he bought a home. I don't know if he lives together with his girlfriend. I don't think he's home. There was a little bit of friction between him and my ex's, uh, and my ex's partner. And I don't know. My, my son does have a grudge. He's got a grudge. And that's one of the reasons why he does things regarding me quickly and swiftly. You know? <clears throat> and the reason why I say you can't change people, I would like everybody to get along in that sense of a change. Not to change their personality, not to change who they are, not to, not to change their belief system, but look at both sides and see if there's a common ground that'll change the negative relationship into a positive one. That's the kind of change I want. But I also have to realize that I made a lot of attempts lot of attempts and when people don't want to have nothing to do with you you have to move on if you're stuck with thoughts like sometimes that I am when you're stuck with thoughts that makes you question and you speculate what you could have done to make things better while you're doing that, time is going by. It's been over three years since I saw my son. Over three years, maybe four years. If I, ever since I saw my son. And he blocked me on his phone. I can't reach him. He doesn't respond to my emails. Even, as, even my ex don't respond to me when I send a text or an email. They don't respond to me. And that caused me to look at my relationship with my parents. 
I don't want to sound like a victim. And <clears throat> I swore up and down when I make my videos that I'm not going to bring issues about family. But you can't help it. You can't help it. You have to realize when you start feeling guilty and you start having thoughts of making amends and when you start having thoughts of that you have no connection with your family and what are you willing to do you have to realize this they have they they have choices too they have decisions too if they wanted to be in your life they'll be in your life they'll reach out and call you they were calling me all right. It was always about when there were issues in the family and there were problems, health problems. Why do they always call me with issues and problems? How come they never call me to say hello and say, hey, I just called to say hi and see how you're doing? Never, never. Their calls and their conversations with me always have to do with how I live down here and they live up there and when am I going up there are you kidding me over 20 years and I'm the one that's got to go up there over 75% of the time I went up there there is not over 75% 75% of the 20 years because I didn't go the past 3 or 4 years I'm not going anymore so I went up there 100% of the time and where were they when I needed them where were they when I was in the hospital when I was doing several surgeries and having physical problems where were they not even a phone call. Are you kidding me? Not even a phone call. That's not family. That's not love. That's not people who care. And regretfully, my son fell in the same pattern as my parents. And that leads me to think that they have something to do with him turning away from me. I truly believe that, guys. I truly believe that. Everyone, it's five o'clock and I'm just leaving work now. Uh, it's been rain, raining a lot today and uh, it looks like it's probably gonna rain tonight. So, hey, it's not a bad thing, we need rain. Uh, we haven't been getting that much this year so far. So, um, it's also supposed to rain tomorrow and the next couple of days. While at work today, I received an email from my managers, one of my managers that's in charge of the flooring department. That's the department that I applied for and I was interviewed on last Friday. So when I got to work today, I checked my email and they told me that that position was awarded to somebody else. And just now, after I left my job, uh, one of my managers sat with me in the office to explain to me who they chose or why they chose. And they told me not to give up, to keep applying for different positions. So I'm not, I wasn't holding my breath, but what I'm gonna do is, I'm not gonna wait until they decide I'm the right fit for what. I'm gonna keep applying on the, on outside uh, companies uh, because quite frankly, I think that's a healthier thing for me to do. It's healthier for me psychological and physical. I was a little bit disappointed, but like I told him, it is what it is. 
So right now I'm quite exhausted mentally and physically. And the past two weeks has been a struggle for me with eating healthy. When I go home, I'm not going to have supper. I'm just going to have a protein shake and a lot of liquids. So I don't have a whole lot right now to discuss, except that I'm going to go home and uh, maybe take a nice bath and relax a little bit and then jump back on my phone and keep submitting more applications. I think my goal this week is to submit more than I did last week and see if I could line up some more interviews for myself. So like I said, that's all I have and I'll touch back with you guys, my friends, uh, as the week progresses and if something comes up regarding a new job or interview, I'll post it right here. You guys have a nice night.